about some specific ideas about the things that separate humans from non-human animals. And this comes from Hausler, Chomsky, and Fitch's discussion of it in 2002. And again, this is coming back to what's built into humans, what is the nativist approach, right? What's going on inside humans that separates them from non-human animals in terms of the ability to learn human-level language? And one type of thing is called faculty of the language in the broad sense, FLB for short. And it's a biological capacity, a built-in capacity for acquiring language that humans have and other animals don't, but much of that capacity is assumed to derive from shared origins with animal communication. So other animals have lesser capacity in some sense, right? So this is maybe when we're talking about sequential information, humans have a superior capacity. Other animals have a very, you know, much less capacity. But there's a sharing of that general capacity to, in some way or another, represent sequential information. So another example is uh, parts of the human conceptual system, such as causal reasoning or spatial relationships or social reasoning, are definitely shared with other primates. So if these contribute, and we think they do in various ways, uh, to language development, then they would be part of the faculty of the language in the broad sense. So the way to think about this, is a helpful way to think about this, is the difference between humans and animals is assumed to be more about quantity. Humans have more power to drive these abilities than other animals, but the fundamental ability in some sense is basically the same, right? If we're thinking about the capacity to represent sequential information, humans have a much superior capacity other animals have a inferior, less capable uh, capacity, but it's, so it's quantity, it's how much, how good are you at doing this thing, in this case representing sequential information. This contrasts with the other type of idea, faculty of language in the narrow sense, FLN for short, and this is a, a chunk right, that only humans have. The biological underpinnings are not shared with other animals. This is like the linguistic nativist, the generativist perspective. It's a difference of quality. It's humans have it, non-human primate and other animals do not have it. It is a qualitative difference. And just to give you a sense of like what some of these things might be, uh, Pinker and Jack and off in 2005 tried to think about, okay, well, what, what might, you know, that kind of thing be? Uh, there are certain properties of speech perception and speech production that it seems like only humans have, I think if I remember correctly, for speech productions control over some of the properties of the larynx that humans have and other humans and non-human primates and other animals just really don't. Words as being referential, it's really talking, referring to concepts, to representing concepts and not just being sounds that you make in association with something. Uh, having the complexity, honestly, of all the grammatical structures that exist in human language. Um, and this is my favorite one, a complex conceptual understanding that requires words. And these are just some examples of concepts that might seem simple, like the word weak, um, but are actually rather complex. So we can see this with some of the other examples. Ten feet from the blue wall is describing this particular location. And you have to understand all of these words to understand exactly kind of what area that picks out half past five next Tuesday. Again, you have to understand all of these words and what they refer to to understand exactly what t period of time we're talking about. But even even a word like week, let's think about it for a moment. So a week, what is a week? Well, a week is, you might say it's seven days, okay? What's a day? Oh, um, a day is 24 hours. Well, what's an hour? Mm. An hour is 60 minutes. What's, what's a minute? <laughs> a minute is 60 seconds. What's a second? Ooh. That gets hard, right? Like you have this visceral sense maybe of what a second is, right? But it's like, think about the word week is built up on all of those pieces of knowledge of knowing what a second, what a minute, what an hour, what a day is, right? So that you understand that a week is seven units and those units are days and <laughs> those day units are made up of other things. That's pretty complex, right? So this is the kind of thing that so far we just don't think, or we, don't, we haven't found in any other non-human animals. Yeah. Uh, so that's again an example of something that might be something that humans have and uh, non-human animals don't, a difference of quality, something of the faculty of language in the narrow sense.